Okay, folks, it's Friday. Welcome back to the channel. We're diving straight into a shorthand video, pretty much, of the Expedition High Level Vision. The reason why I'm doing a shorthand video of this is because a lot of people just don't like podcasts. They don't like to have to digest two hours of information. They would rather it all come down in a very, very nice consolidated video, pretty much just, just summarizing what happened, what went on, and what the idea is around this. So something to take point of is this is not a proposal. This is not a governance authority. This isn't something we're going to be putting as a whole up for proposal. It will go out in chunks. It will happen in a specific order as to which how we feel is what the community and the blockchain most needs right now. So the other thing to point out is there isn't a charge for us doing this. this isn't us seeking a payment, a quarterly payment or anything like this. This is simply us putting a vision forward and saying to the community, hey, we have the ability to mostly do all of this with some help from certain other people. You know, if you're happy with this, we're, we're going to go forward. We're going to propose individual things. And if you're happy with that, we'll go ahead and we will do it. So the third, the, the, the third thing, God, you can tell it's early, <coughs> early here and I'm not well. <clears throat> so Enhanced payment for development teams. This is talking about the milestone based system. And this mechanism is something that's needed on both sides, not just one. We need security for ourselves, not just the developers. And this doesn't hinder development. It doesn't slow it down. It doesn't mean their money's not going to be paid out as it should be. In fact, this is going to make it better. No development teams would be able to just get given, say, quarter of a million LUNC and then just take it straight to market, sell it all and that be done. They've got their money, they can spend it all straight away. Instead, they would be collecting their weekly wage, so to speak. And they wouldn't be bulk selling out quarter of a million LUNC at a time. It would happen in dribs and drabs, right? It would, it would introduce a system that is very streamlined. Instead of developers being paid for one big chunk of things, they would have a milestone set. Okay, this is your milestone. This is what's been proposed. This is what's been passed. This is what you're going to be paid for. Okay, I've completed this. Ticks the milestone system. The community's happy. Everything goes on as it should. The only reason the community would be unhappy is if <clears throat> that milestone wasn't completed and there was a deviation made. Then the community would be able to propose a proposal which would put a halt to that specific developer's funds, not even all of them, right? You could freeze individual developers' funds. You wouldn't be attacking the whole group of people. You would simply be going for the individual who has been the nuisance, who's not been sticking to what has been proposed, what's been passed via governance. I think this paper milestone system is more than needed right now. I could probably list off at least another 10. I'm not going to. I'm going to move straight to number two. So number two is more or less to introduce a system, right, which is what the Commonwealth is, but on station. That's controlled through the GitHub repository, meaning that it belongs to the chain to governance, having it integrated into the system. Now, I brought this idea forward a long time ago. People like Terror Rebels have actually utilized this idea and made it happen. We can do the same. We can make this happen and we can get everything under the station app, which is what we should aim to do. We shouldn't have loads of different third party apps and they've got to make an account here. They've got to make an account there. They've got to sign up here. They've got to sign up here. They've, you've got a comment here. People don't see it that are on station. It all becomes really confusing. Just having everything inside station is an absolute no brainer. So moving on to point three, which is the endpoint infrastructure. We all know that the infrastructure is provided by all nodes for free, but we do pay Hexagon for another endpoint provider. The biggest issue is right now as a blockchain, we're not we're not developing our ecosystem. In fact, our, our ecosystem is actually being destroyed very slowly because we're not doing anything to it. People are just taking. We can't afford right now as a blockchain exactly how TFO is to afford those running costs when we can get infrastructure for free. So it makes no sense from a business perspective for us to pay Hexagon for infrastructure we get for free. Right now, our best bet would be to utilize what is free, right? Save the money up and develop systems which can replace all of this. 
all of it to the best extent that it can be to reduce that overall running cost and have it decentralize the active set. Now, we went over a lot of these points in real detail in the podcast. So if you feel like going and watching that and maybe jumping through, I'm going to add um, more or less like bookmarks to the video and you'll be able to click those bookmarks and it will it will take you to each point. So let's move forward to number four because we're getting more than halfway through this video, uh, which is enhancing security through a voluntary KYC, KYD system. This speaks for itself. The good thing about this is, is you're not forcing it on people. You're simply providing something for developers to utilize to get a verified tick mark. And if they don't do this, they'll have not a verified tick mark. They'll simply say this developer is not KYC, KYD. As a blockchain, as a community and as validators, we have the right to know who's working on our blockchain. This provides a good level of security that is not forced. It's merely optional and they can do it if they wish to do it. Having this also built into station as a list, simple how we, similar to how we have the validators list currently, we would work out a system <clears throat> for the KYC, KYD devs to be on and then the, a list for the ones that are not KYC, KYD to be on. Would this mean all developers on the blockchain? No, of course it doesn't. It means paid developers, which I, this blockchain has the right to know who the paid developers are, what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So moving forward on to number five, really important one. This is implementing a dynamic commission module for validators. I'm going to just put this out there short and I'm going to keep it sweet. This module has the ability to decentralize the active set and bring voting power down and fully decentralize it. <clears throat> The way this would do this is by introducing a dynamic commission, meaning all nodes being at almost 17% voting power would have their commission shoved up in an order to bring their voting power down. It would go up to something like 20%, I think, because that's the max cap on that module that I looked at that was being spoken about. Now, this is more than needed. It's been a year and a half. Things aren't getting better. They're just getting worse. The Nakamoto index of four means that the top four validators can pass anything they want. And we have to get them to vote in order to get anything to pass. This has to change. It's not changing. The top validators aren't doing anything to mitigate their voting power, only to gain it. Introducing a module like this introduces a fair level playing field for everybody. Nobody gets special treatment. Everybody gets what the module does more than less. Now, facilitating user onboarding with station ramps. This one has been promised by so many people and it's never ever been fulfilled. Kado is what TFL use. Kado is likely what we could get to support LUNC considering they mostly support these systems anyway. I think that'd be a good route and then possibly look at getting on and off ramps, not just the on ramps. So important. Number seven is really short, really sweet, really easy, but really effective. And it's a reason for vote memo mechanism for validators. And that's to give validators a box for when they're going to vote to write in why they voted what they voted. We need things like this so badly. It's, it's these small things that we can do to make big changes further down the line. So number eight is probably one of the most important, but ambitious to say the least and it's replacing the tax with a dynamic tax just think about it like this remove all of the taxes and just introduce one dynamic tax that contains everything inside it and if the blockchain is seeing mass amounts of volume what are you as a community going to want to do you're going to want to put the burn tax up to make the most of it right well exactly so let's have a dynamic tax like i've spoken about before that works on a slider oh you're at this amount volume on chain. Okay. The burn tax goes to 0.7%. Oh, it's done a recalculation. You're now at this much volume. It's gone to 1.2%. And it really is as simple as that. It's a Goldilocks tax that self-serves, works for itself and works for the benefit of this community and blockchain and validators. Oh, the chain's not doing too good. Oh, there's really low volume. Oh, there's really low traffic. Cool. 0.2% gas fee. You know, Bring things that are going to incentivize security, incentivize people to come and build, and so many more things. With the project burn whitelisting module system, whatever you want to call it, being introduced, um, 
it's going to hopefully bring a different level of sentiment to projects on the outside to maybe migrate to this blockchain specifically. And that's the idea, right? That's what we want. We should be acting just how TFL are acting. Because if you listen to their space last night, they specifically spoke about everything that's going on in the LUNC community, except from this is actually going on over there. They've got huge issues with funding and where they're going to get funds from, how the development team are going to be paid. They're going through it all, but they're not destroying the blockchain in the process. You haven't got everybody take, 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 taking. You've got TFL simply going, right, we can't actually afford Confio anymore. Do we need it? No. Well, we've got a free option. We should probably go for that for the meantime until we're in a position where we can afford all of these extra things. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's get that out there. Let's do a space. Let's tell the community. This is what we need. We need a better better approach. And currently, everybody knows our developers are just not listening. They're not doing what they should be doing. They're doing what they want to do. And it's obvious that they know they can get away with this now, especially with my proposal not passing because all nodes didn't put a vote in. It's becoming quite obvious that they, they're realizing, hey, we can do what we want. And hey, you know, the big nodes aren't going to get involved. They're not going to take aside bunny fingers, right? They're just going to stay quiet. They're not going to risk that voting power. Maybe we can just do what we want. And this is all sort of a situation now where we need better people, right? And if that comes down to people like myself and Strathcole who are saying, hey, we can do all of this mostly for free with some help from other people, then that's what it takes. Folks, share this video. If you've seen the podcast, I appreciate it. If you haven't, consider checking it out. I hope you got a bite-sized chunk of realistically what we're talking about here. Now, like I was saying, what is most important to us right now is the commission. If we don't fix the commission for validators, the system's just going to implode like Terror Rebels did. Fixing this is going to fix a lot of problems across board. So this will be the first step for us. But like I said, this isn't a proposal. This isn't a governance paper. This is just us explaining to the community what we're thinking about doing, what we're thinking about proposing, and simply showing all of the other validators and community members that, hey, yes, we may be saying we should introduce this, but we've also got a plan more or less as to where we want to go with this, what we're seeing as the end result. And, you know, once we've do done this, we can move forward to another high level united vision and keep pushing at this. This is available on Commonwealth. Links to all of this in the description. Vote. Stay safe, stay humble, stay aware, and I will catch you in the next one.